TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu emphasizes that the Golan Heights will always remain under Israeli sovereignty. Iranian Minister of Intelligence Mahmoud Al-Aviv warns that unless international sanctions are lifted, the Ayatollah regime may opt to develop a nuclear weapon. A United Nations report reveals Iran and North Korea cooperate on a number of intercontinental ballistic missile development projects. Israel will not be deterred by hypocritical and outrageous attempts to prevent it from protecting its citizens from any threat. Responding to the International Criminal Court's recent ruling, claiming jurisdiction to launch an investigation on alleged war crimes committed by Israel in Gaza, the West Bank and East Jerusalem, Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz asserted that no court, regardless of its location, will prevent Israel from protecting its citizens. ישראל היא המדינה החזקה ביותר במזרח התיכון ואנחנו לא נרתעים מניסיונות צבועים ומופרכים למנוע מאיתנו להגן על אזרחינו מול כל איום ביהודה ושומרון, ברצועת עזה בסביבותיה ובכל נקודה שבה משטרים עוינים מנסים לפגוע באזרחי מדינת ישראל. גם הפלסטינאים צריכים להבין שכדי לפתור את הסכסוך חייבים לחזור למשא ומתן ולא יעזור בית דין גם אם הוא בהאג. Jerusalem's top defense official, who served as IDF chief of general staff during Israel's 2014 military campaign against the Islamist militias in Gaza, a conflict subject to one of the ICC's intended investigations, also emphasized Israeli Defense Forces' uncompromising determination to adhere to moral standards of military conduct dictated by international law. היציבות והשקט היחסי ביהודה ושומרון הם תוצאה של פעילות מבצעית יומיומית, נחושה ומקצועית של מפקדי וחיילי צה"ל בגזרה. כמי ששירת פה משנים רבות, גם כמפקד חטיבה וגם כמפקד האוגדה, אני יודע היטב שהגזרה ידעה ימים של טרור קשה שגבה מחירים כואבים. מול אתגרי הטרור צה"ל פועל תוך חתירה למגע ומסכל מאות פיגועים, ככה לילה אחרי לילה הוא מפגין יכולות מקצועיות ומקפיד על טוהר הנשק והדין הבינלאומי. Defense Minister Gantz, who concluded a working visit of the IDF's Judea and Samaria division, went on to address the Palestinian leadership as well as Israeli politicians who will form the next Israeli government after the upcoming elections scheduled to be held in March. לצד קידום הנורמליזציה שיכולה לסייע בכך, וגם בדחיפה של הממשל החדש, יש חלון הזדמנויות להגיע להתקדמות מדינית עם הפלסטינים. זו צריכה להיות משימה מרכזית של הממשלה הבאה, שמדינת ישראל תהיה מדינה בטוחה, דמוקרטית ויהודית. אנחנו נמשיך לשמור על אזרחי ישראל בכל הגבולות ובכל המקומות, ונמשיך לעבוד קודם כל עם עצמנו, אבל גם ביחד עם הממשל, להבטיח הרחבה של הסכמי השלום, הסכמי אברהם, ולקדם ככל האפשר הסכם מדיני עם הפלסטינים, וכמובן כדי להרחיב את ההישגים שלנו, כמו הכרה ברמת הגולן ועוד. אני מקווה מאוד ומאמין שההישגים האלה ילכו ויתרחשו גם בשנים הקרובות. The last part of his remarks in which Minister Gantz mentioned the Trump administration's decision on March 25th, 2019 to recognize Israeli sovereignty of the Golan Heights was seemingly directed at the new administration in the United States. That after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in an interview to CNN's Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer stopped short from unveiling whether the Biden administration would move to ratify the previous administration's decision to recognize Israeli sovereignty over the strategic plateau. While Secretary Blinken acknowledged that within today's context, at a time of numerous threats emanating from war-torn Syria, the Golan Heights is very important to Israel's security. However, Washington's top diplomat affirmed, quote, if the situation were to change in Syria, that is something we would look at. They said that they are preparing it, but I have already prepared it. And for me, the city of the Golan will always be a part of the country of Israel, a part of the country. What, are we going to return to Syria? To the top of the world that is there? To the war of the citizens? To the war of the people? 
Turning from the Golan Heights westward, where the IDF concluded a military exercise titled Lightning Storm, which was conducted in the northern command of the Israeli military along the border with Lebanon. According to the IDF spokesperson's unit, the exercise intended to improve the IDF troops' readiness, during which the military examined how to apply the lessons learned from operational activities that took place along the border with Lebanon last summer, and will prepare the troops for a variety of scenarios, including readiness for combat days. It further noted, quote, the IDF will continue to prepare and improve its readiness along the border with Lebanon while carrying out the task of protecting the residents in the area. It is worth mentioning that the exercise came less than a week after IDF Chief of General Staff, Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi, held a meeting with Unifil Force Commander Major General Stefano Del Col. During the meeting, the security situation in southern Lebanon was discussed. It included Unifil missions in the region in relation to the ongoing violations of UN Security Council Resolution 1701 by Lebanon's Iranian proxy Hezbollah and the lack of enforcement by the Lebanese armed forces. It also included complaints by the latter directed at Israel. Turning to the Islamic Republic of Iran, where the Iranian Minister of Intelligence, Mahmoud Alavi, warned that unless the international sanctions imposed on his country are lifted, the Ayatollah regime may opt to develop a nuclear weapon. In an interview to state-run television broadcast late Monday, the Ayatollah regime's top spy stressed, quote, our nuclear program is peaceful, and the fatwa by the Supreme Leader has forbidden nuclear weapons, but if they push Iran in that direction, then it wouldn't be Iran's fault, but those who pushed it. Minister Alavi further stressed, quote, If a cat is cornered, it may show a kind of behavior that a free cat would not. Separately, the Iranian intelligence minister also mentioned that a member of Iran's military facilitated the assassination of the country's top nuclear scientist, Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, in December. However, Minister Alavi stopped short from elaborating on this matter. Responding to Iran's top intelligence official on the nuclear remark, U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Price said that while Washington took note, it could not yet confirm whether the warning was Tehran's official position. Well, it's not yet clear to us that Mahmoud Alavi was speaking for anyone but himself. I would say that uh, we, of course, took note um, of those remarks. They are uh, very concerning. Um, I would also note, uh, and I referenced this yesterday as well, uh, that Iran has an obligation under the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty, the NPT, never, 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 never permanent prohibition uh, to acquire nuclear weapons. Uh, and it reaffirmed uh, that commitment uh, under the JCPOA. Um, uh, I think that's where we where we leave our reaction. The State Department spokesperson went on to respond about a question regarding a classified United Nations report which unveiled that Iran and North Korea cooperate on a number of intercontinental ballistic missile development projects. Per the report, quote, this resumed cooperation between Iran and North Korea is said to have included the transfer of critical parts with the most recent shipment associated with this relationship taking place in 2020. Well, I, I don't think it really changes our strategic orientation uh, uh, to Iran. Um, you know, if the, if the old adage is trust and verify, uh, in this case, it, it may be mistrust um, and, and verify. Um, uh, when it comes to this report, uh, we've seen uh, the press reporting, of course. Um, we won't comment on a UN report that has not yet been published. Um, but it is true that we continue to use a variety of nonproliferation tools uh, to work to prevent the further advancement of Iran's missile program and its ability to proliferate uh, this technology uh, to others, and including North Korea. Um, and this includes working with our partners um, to stop specific shipments of equipment and technology to these programs, using our engagement and uh, multilateral fora to raise awareness of Iran's missile activities, uh, and to urge countries uh, to take steps to address these activities, and finally imposing non-proliferation -prolifer sanctions um, pursuant to our domestic authorities against entities uh, supporting Iran's uh, missile program. Um, that's why we've also said um, that uh, our goal um, is not only to 
um, have Iran come back into full compliance um, with the JCPOA, um, but then to use the JCPOA, um, which we would seek to, in the first instance, lengthen and strengthen um, as a platform for follow-on agreements um, to include other areas of Iran's malign activities, and that includes, uh, of course, its ballistic missile program. Despite Washington's repeated demands for a renegotiated nuclear deal that would cover wide-ranging malign activities by Tehran and its proxies, the Islamic Republic is adamant to reject any type of talks with the United States. درباره قدرت دفاعی خودش با دیگری مذاکره نمیکنه که من اینو داشته باشم یا نداشته باشم ما هم هرگز مذاکره نمیکنیم باید بایدن نه تنها که نه تنها که باید به برجام برگرده باید کوتاهی ها و قصور در حقیقت ترامپ رو هم جبران بکنه باید از مردم ایران اسلامی هم واقعا اسخایی بکنه چون برجام یک توافق بین المللی است Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Yemen in prayer once again for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, and for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its numerous ramifications worldwide. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.